it is my pleasure this morning, as we do at every, as he's been with us at every Farm Bureau convention since he's been our Commissioner of Agriculture, it's my pleasure to introduce our Commissioner, Steve Troxler. You know, since taking office in 2005, uh, Trox, Commissioner Troxler has, has done just a great job. He's focused on developing new markets for North Carolina farm products. He's worked on preserving our working farms. He's worked on protecting and making sure we have a state of safe state's food supply. Uh, we at North Carolina Farm Bureau, as you know, we work closely with the commissioner and his staff on a daily basis. Uh, in North Carolina, we're proud of the partnerships that we have here and the collaborative, uh, the collaborative spirit that exists within our ag community. Our commissioner's strong leadership plays a significant role in making that happen fostering those relationships and making agriculture our state's number one economic driver. Steve Trox and I are both uh, alumni of North Carolina State University, and we've known each other since college days. Uh, he and his wife, my wife and I, we've been through leadership training programs together, but Steve and his wife, Sharon, have two sons, two daughters-in-law, and five children. You know, in North Carolina, we're proud of our agriculture, we're proud of our state's farmers, and I can tell you, I'm proud and we're proud of our Commissioner of Agriculture. Commissioner Troxler, we're glad to have you here with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our friend, Steve Troxler. Steve. Good morning. It is always a pleasure to be here to see so many of you that uh, I can see all in one place, that uh, I see many of you as we travel across the state, but uh, glad you're here. Our strength is the people that participate in our commodity groups, our farm groups, and strength we need at this time. This has been a trying time for North Carolina agriculture and agribusiness the past uh, three or four years, but I think the partnerships and our strength are gonna deliver us through this. Uh, the one thing I know is we cannot let these disasters define us. What we've got to do is let how we respond to these disasters and how we help people define us. And I'm proud of the way the state of North Carolina has stepped up to the plate and done that. Uh, I know Larry and I traveled uh, many a mile after the hurricanes and tropical storms and the things I saw uh, were unbelievable. I wish I had never seen them. I hope I never see them again, but reality is reality. And I saw tears in eyes that I never thought I would see crying. I heard people say, you know, I've had too much. I've got to leave. Uh, I saw people, t had people tell me that, you know, this may be the last time that I ever farm. So, we banded together and stepped up to the plate and went to the legislature and asked for $250 million in direct payments to farmers across North Carolina. We had a good idea that that figure would choke the legislature, but uh, as it turned out, we did get $240 million, but this only represented 20% of the loss that people had taken during uh, Hurricane Florence and Michael. But we have been able to get $202 million of this money out so far. Uh, we've got five western counties that were added that we will be getting checks out to shortly. And then there's going to be a cleanup payment that could be in the neighborhood of $25 million that will come out right after the first of the year. I certainly hope this helps build a bridge for our farmers in North Carolina to get to better times. Uh, we would hope that 2020 uh, is going to be the year of the rebound. Uh, we certainly need higher prices. And Larry said it many times, it all comes down to profitability on the farms, and that's not there right now. So there are a lot of things that have got to happen. Trade wars have got to be subtle. Tariffs have got to be removed. Uh, policy has got to be good so that we have an opportunity to succeed in what we do. And that's the things that we'll be working on in partnership with Farm Bureau and our commodity groups uh, in 2020. Uh, as a farmer, and I know many of you are, 
Uh, you know, there's always going to be a better year, and I never entered a year that I didn't think it was going to be the best one ever. So I think we've got to go into this next year with that attitude and work to make that happen. There are a lot of exciting things on the horizon that for the future of agriculture and agribusiness in North Carolina, I think are gonna make a difference. We recently had the ribbon cutting ceremony on the North Carolina Food Innovation Lab up in Kannapolis. I think this is gonna be a huge help as far as bringing more food manufacturing, especially into rural North Carolina and creating opportunities to raise more crops, uh, even as diverse as we are, we know what tobacco is going through and we have got to find a series of replacement crops that uh, will bring the income back to the farm that's needed. Uh, and one of the things that I think could be expanded greatly in North Carolina is vegetable production and specialty crop production and I think this uh, innovation lab can help do that. We're going to hopefully finish construction of our new lab facility in Raleigh uh, by the, probably by October, November of this coming year. Uh, it will replace five aging labs that are 40 years old or more uh, and bring better efficiency to serving the, the people of North Carolina, particularly uh, the livestock industry, food safety, uh, pesticides, weights and measures. Uh, so we've got all of these things combined into one lab. And when I talk about efficiency, our food lab is so unheatable and uncoolable that we have to run the heat and the air at the same time to maintain humidity levels that we can run the equipment. Now you talk about efficiency, go home and turn your heat on and your air condition at the same time see what the power bill is. I mean, that's what we're doing right now, so this will be a great step forward. The Plant Science Initiative uh, at NC State University is well underway. This will be another uh, highlight of what we will do in the future with plants. And even though we're a huge livestock state, uh, the livestock eat plants. So anything that we do with plants uh, certainly will help our livestock industries. So it's time to step up to the plate once again and to do everything that we uh, need to do to remain successful, remain the number one industry. I've had a goal of being a uh, $100 billion industry in North Carolina ag and uh, agribusiness. We're at 91.8. So I think with the things that we're beginning to do and a little help from commodity prices, uh, and policy, I think we're going to get there fairly shortly, and that will be a red letter day in North Carolina when we achieve that. This is the sixth time that I've been before you and asked for your support uh, for Commissioner of Agriculture. I recently filed for my fifth term as your commissioner, and I hope that you will support that effort. We've got a lot to do uh, in a short period of time. I think the partnerships between the department, our, our universities, Farm Bureau, the commodity groups, the Agribusiness Council, all of those are strong and need to remain strong. And I intend to continue to cultivate those partnerships and to lead, uh, to lead this effort to make us the, the $100 billion industry that we can be. Larry, every time I've been here uh, to ask for support to run, you've been the president. And it's my understanding that uh, we will have a new president after tomorrow. I am deeply saddened uh, because we are close friends. We are very good partners. And I would have got a couple little things that I would like to present to you if I could. Laura Keegan, would you bring those to me? First of all, I would like to uh, present this one-of-a-kind tractor-trailer to you that depicts the food distribution division that we have in the department. Uh, and it is personalized. It does have your picture on it. And uh, <laughs> I think your grandkids may enjoy playing with that.
The other thing that I have, uh, I have an award that I call the Ambassador of Agriculture that I give out to very special people for their work. Uh, and just what it says, being an ambassador for agriculture, not only here in North Carolina, but nationally and all over the world, you have done that and you have done it well. And this is in just an appreciation of the effort that you put forth and the leadership that you have shown uh, for North Carolina. So I'd like to present that to you. And before I go, uh, there's one thing that I would uh, like to ask your help with. There's a, a nasty rumor going around that the Raleigh Farmers Market is going to close or move, and it's not true. Uh, we have released a master plan for improvements to the farmers market over 25, 30, even 50 years that uh, show that what we think is going to happen in that area uh, based on the development of the Dix Park next door. Uh, this is a, a market that's got uh, several years of age on it, I think uh, approaching about 30 years of age, so there are a lot of improvements that are going to have to be made. Uh, but if there was any overture to close this farmer's market, or move this farmer's market, you would have been able to hear me in heaven and hell and all places in between. So there has not been an overture to do anything like that. In fact, uh, we've been working in partnership with the city of Raleigh and the Dix Conservancy to make sure that this uh, farmer's market has a long and healthy life to serve the people of North Carolina. So if you would just help me dispel that rumor, I certainly would appreciate it. Thank you for all you do. Uh, it's so great to see all of you here today, and I look forward to working with you next year on the matters that concern ag and agribusiness in North Carolina. Thank you.